really the range was three quarters of a mile to a mile and a half. And generally speaking, it was perpendicular to the roads. And so everybody is parking along the roads and going perpendicular. If you go parallel to the road and nobody else can park, let's say it's a steep area where you can't park, you're getting away from people automatically going, going parallel with the road. What was the commonality? Just kind of kick us out. What was the commonality of places hunters were not getting into based off the GPS data? I want to preface this by saying I don't think hunters are lazy because I'm, I'm one of them, right? But you're talking about areas that are vast. Think about WMAs that are 50,000 acres. They're rugged, and the roads are on the ridges. They tend to be anyhow, and that's where hunters are. They're gonna, they have to park somewhere, right? And they have limited time to hunt during these just several-day firearms hunts. And so hunters are parking on the ridges. They're w- walking out ridges. And that's where they're hunting. They're also targeting food plots as well. And so generally speaking, they're close to roads. They are on areas that are at high elevation. They're targeting deciduous forests, so think oak groves. And that was very predictable across our study sites. And so we instrumented hunters, giving them GPS units and asking them to turn them. We turn them on, ask them to carry them throughout their hunt. So we're able to look at how long they hunt it where they hunted, how far they traveled, how long they were on stand, and then what habitats and ruggedness, et cetera, that they, they use. So I'm, I'm prefacing all that, and I'll, then I'll take your questions to, to solidify what we saw in those vast refuge areas that we identified. So road access being on top of the ridges, they stayed on top of the ridges, walking ridges out. So I'm guessing there was a, a void, a large void. If it, someone had a drop in elevation, and maybe come up another side where there wasn't road access, there wasn't many people doing that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So on the scale of hunters were using about 5% of these WMAs. So you're talking on a 50,000 acre WMA as an example, only 5% of it on average is being hunted. So if you can just get away from the road, think a mile or more, go down an elevation, back up, especially back down again, and you go up again, you're definitely away from everybody. <laughs> but clearly, you know, I, I think it's it's pretty recent that some of us are starting to pack deer out on our back, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, and that gives you a little bit more ability. Now, if you're dragging uphill, I'll tell you, I've drug a lot of deer, but it's it's rough business. And that's where our hunters have heart attacks and get, get themselves into issues. And so I can understand not wanting to go far, especially if you're going back to camp and you're having that especially the mountain experience with your hunting buddies and family, Um, you want to get back to camp. And that's what we saw was that hunters were having essentially two, we call them hunting bouts per day, but they're going, taking, taking a stand, hunting the morning, going back to camp and then going back out in the evening. And so if you're tied to that going back and forth twice a day, it's limited how far you're going to travel to hunt your deer. And that's what by and large, most people were doing those that we had instrumented with GPS units anyhow. Interesting. So th- that, to me, as a listener or viewer of the show, would give me more confidence. If if you could build your confidence of, hey, it's going to physically be very demanding. Mentally, it's going to be very demanding as well when you're spending. Like, if you can spend all day out there and cover that ground and just, like you said, drop an elevation, come up the other side, and if you drop elevation again, you're going to put yourself – way away from where majority of the hunters are going to be at. Right. You know, my advice would be if you're a hunter, as, as our hunters, we saw they keyed in on those oak groves in particular, those oak stands that we're producing, get out there and scout those stands. I mean, what we're seeing now is you can, we're having a good mast year, particularly in the Piedmont here, but get out, identify those stands that are producing right now. And, you know, it might be a little farther in, but you're unlikely to shoot multiple deer anyway, right? And so you're targeting getting one deer, a quality deer, having a quality experience, getting further out there and setting for the day is much better than being close to the road and having lower success and being, you know, really bumping elbows with other hunters because everybody's along the roads. Was there a distance, like thinking back to some of those, you know, the data that y'all tracked from individuals, was there a certain like average distance they were getting from the roads like what was that potentially like yeah it was really the range was three quarters of a mile to a mile and a half and generally speaking it was perpendicular to the roads and so everybody is parking along the roads and going perpendicular if you go parallel to the road 
and nobody else can park, let's say it's a steep area where you can't park, you're getting away from people automatically going, going parallel with the road. And so think they're going three quarters of a mile to a mile and a half. They're spending on average two hours a day hiking into their spots, in and out of their spots. And so that's eating a little bit of clock for them as well. And, and so, yeah, you, you go, everybody's going perpendicular to the road, that general distance from the road. They're staying at high elevation. They're in deciduous forest. Very, very consistent. So they are walking a good distance, but they're walking, staying high. They're not trying to lose any elevation. So it's really not as an intense of a walk or a trek, but they're covering distances, but it's on maybe less easier access, but potentially less used areas based off hunting pressure than where the deer are probably going to be at, which kind of goes into a little bit of what we're all seeing on the, the data, specifically some of the does y'all had collared and how they were reacting to that hunting pressure. Because I'm curious if they just lost a bunch of elevation, got way down to some of the bottoms, or they started just crossing ridges, ridge systems just trying to get away from that pressure. Well, they didn't even have to try to get away from the pressure because, and we instrumented those, when I say instrumented, we gave them a GPS collar, so a big old necklace, and we, we caught a lot of those deer on open areas because it was easier to access and get our trapping there and get our crews there off of roads. But those does didn't necessarily live on those roads and open areas. It was part of their home range. And so we had deer distributed throughout these, these WMAs. But during the hunts, these does had on average, they'd use about 15 acres a day, which isn't very big. But if you think about our hunters are in those oak groves, the time of year you're talking about October, November, when acorns are dropping, those deer are really keying on those acorns. So I can see that. They gorge themselves. They bed locally. So about 15 acres a day. And we had 20 does with collars on. And we saw no difference in movement. So like we look at different like tortuosity of their movements. Are they being pushed? What's their step length? Are they running? None of it changed. And the use of the, we call them utilization distributions, pre-hunt, hunt, and post-hunt were the same across those periods. So the hunting didn't change the way these does use the landscape. Most of these does weren't impacted by hunters at all. They didn't know that antlerless deer were off. These are all does that we had collar. They didn't know antlerless deer were off the table for harvest. They just weren't being impacted by hunters. Interesting. Was, they were using areas that the hunters just weren't accessing? Was that what it was? They were using areas that hunters weren't accessing, but also hunters were at very low density. It was about 250 acres per hunter. So think about a lease that somebody has, right? A 250-acre piece might have 10 people plus hunting on it. And so very low pressure. But we had does that were in areas where hunters were. They just weren't being impacted highly by them. 